Yeah. Yeah. Shall we pray? Yeah. <clears throat> Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for yet another opportunity to gather to you, Lord, um, and to look into your word, Father God. We thank you for, Lord, every um, every blessing comes from you, Father God. Every good thing comes from you, Father God. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for, as your word says, Lord, for blessing us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And Lord, as your word says, Lord, you're the one who daily loads us with benefits, Father God. And we are to that we are so grateful. And um, yes, Master, we pray that the things that we read, that we learn, Lord, will stay with us, um, and we will not. Uh, we will have a strong grip on it, Father God. And I pray that things that we learn, Master, will 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 change us from the inside out, God. Father, I pray that even things that have been part of our lives that are unhealthy, that are not beneficial for us, Lord, I pray, Lord, by the power of Your Spirit. And even as you give us the revelation, God, I pray that Lord, things will change, Father God, <coughs> that we will be able to let go, Lord, that your spirit, O oh God, will establish certain strengths in us to make us, O oh God, into people who are more like you, Father God. We thank you. We come at this time into your mighty hands. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so we've been um, life skills. We've been looking at uh, each one of those skills. Um, anything that you were able to put into practice in terms of planning, in terms of uh, uh, what were some of the other things that we saw? You know, setting of goals. Um, anyone? Making a schedule, okay, timetable. Like, like day schedules, mm. like, but I am getting failed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the thing is to, uh, uh, yeah, we, we sometimes get back to our earlier thing of, you know, not uh, because it's a new thing. Uh, any habit will take about, uh, at least they, they say that it takes about three weeks to, you know, for us to internalize and get used to it and our mind to come to, you know, uh, the thing. But then, I think if we persist, it will we'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is anyone learning any new skills? As in any skill, not not necessarily what we are uh, looking at right now. Anything. It can be maybe some music lesson. It could be some language lesson or any. It could be something to do with some you know, cooking skills, gardening skills, whatever. <laughs> is anyone learning any skills? I just heard about gardening this morning, so uh, that's why the gardening came in. But um, uh, cooking skills, okay, wonderful. Oh, that's something that I'm scared of. But uh, yeah, good. So you uh, you used to cook before, or you've never? You, okay, you, but you started doing now. Wow. So what did you try? <laughs> Milk. <laughs> Maggie, okay, okay. Oh, I, uh, oh that's uh, yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> okay. Oh, fantastic. They told you. Okay. Oh, awesome. Okay. Okay. So Prince is saying editing. Okay. Is it the video or audio editing, uh, Prince? <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, he's saying editing. So I'm just thinking. <laughs> Anyone else? Video editing, okay. Any other? <clears throat> Maybe use something. Trying to um, uh, learning like editing, like editing uh, is it? Editing, it, it's mm. like a Photoshop, mm. and uh, I'm very, I'm interested in video uh, editing and photograph uh, editing. Okay. So I, I was doing little bit. Mm. So yesterday only I asked one person from our college, mm. give me software, and teach me also. Okay. And like this was. Oh, very nice. Excellent. Yeah. Anyone else? <clears throat> uh, anyone else online? Um, any new skills that you're learning? Uh, it, it needn't be, you know, uh, some things that we typically look at. It could be something totally different <clears throat> from what we normally think about, talk about. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so it's a it's a good thing to have this. Um, in front of us, in the sense, to to maybe even ask ourselves this question: Okay, what new thing have I learned today, or what 
some things you learn in a day and in a moment right it's like maybe some some fact that you read up some video that you watch so something you know some knowledge that you gain that's fine but then certain things take time right and we need to persist we need to continue and this whole thing of continuous learning if we can have that as our as a as a culture for us right and it will be something that will be really beneficial really valuable okay so jackin says learning to drive uh, though she has license she's not confident so she's learning to drive wonderful yeah yeah I, yeah even my family members they have license but uh, they're not confident so this is something that i need to tell them um and i'm i've been a very bad teacher so <laughs> uh, very impatient so they they don't want to learn from me driving so yeah okay okay good so let's look at um, you know what we've been um, uh, you know uh, what, what we've been um, uh, looking at last class about interpersonal communication skills and and in line with that we looked at uh, something which is very important which is listening skills right so um, we saw that listening is not as the same as hearing uh, and it's it's different right so so we might think okay what is this listening you know how can listening be important how can listening be uh, you know a skill that we are considering etc right um well in in the book of james we see let every man be you know quick to listen right um and slow to speak right verse 19 like james 1 verse 19 so then my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear which means quick to uh, hear and listen slow to speak slow to wrath okay so so the so that's the priority uh, and that's the order in which you know you you put some effort into listening so we know listening is different from uh, a different it's an active thing it's not a passive um, just receiving of sound or information it's very active okay, so um, let's look at um, I think we looked at it last class, but let's just quickly run through the purpose. Right? What does listening uh, or good listening? What does it uh, fulfill in our lives? Like, um, let me just share the screen. Okay. Okay. So, if you see, uh, good listening skills actually enable us to focus on the message that the speaker is communicating. Right. So. You're able to concentrate. You're able to focus. Uh, if we have this listening skill, you know, where we are not getting distracted, we are not getting even our own thoughts and uh, you know uh, preconceived notions. Uh, even we're not letting allowing that. We are getting the information, and this getting the information is very very crucial, very important in um, you know for all of us. Whatever profession we might be in, whatever vocation, you know, whether it's even in a you know in a home setting, relationally, right? Um, it is important. Okay. Um, the second thing it the, it helps us, you know, first is of course focus uh, on what is being communicated. Uh, second thing is to get a full and accurate understanding, right? So sometimes we misunderstand, <clears throat> or we get a you know a deficient understanding of any 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 message or any information uh, because we are not listening right so we will get a full and accurate understanding because we are able to listen we are able to take in that information which leads to the third thing which means that we are able to assess it analyze it well right so maybe somebody wants your opinion or wants a solution from you Maybe you're in a leadership position, and people are, you know, sharing something, and you need to decide. Maybe you have, you know, maybe a group that is sharing, or you know, uh, a couple of people who are sharing, and you need to decide. You need to listen. You need to decide. You need to discern, right? So the the first part, the the important part is even before you discern and and share your, uh, you know, your decision, right? We need to be able to listen well and get it accurately. Right? So that so good listening skills are important to even 
you know assess it analyze right and it also involves not just the tone and the message which is being said but it also involves the non verbal signals right what is the person's gesture uh, based on which you can actually assess is the person happy sad is the person doubtful and even though they are saying it are they being sincere right are they being honest and which is why you know on a phone call it's difficult to assess right because you hear only the voice but you can't see the face and that's why you know sometimes these the interviews you know we shift to an online thing where you can see the person and you're able to slightly you know your assessment is better and definitely in person when you meet and when you see all the you know the the non verbal gestures the signals which accompany what is what they are saying right so it gives a clear understanding of what they are actually conveying right okay so it helps us in all this listening also shows conveys something when you listen to a person what is being said it shows respect it shows concern it shows that you are empathizing with the person you are encouraging the person to share right so focusing and and all this uh, is part of listening right listening also you know it conveys to the person that you are respecting the person and you are putting the person first right you're not interrupting constantly you're not saying what you have to say but you're actually you know respecting the person to and giving them that importance to allowing them i'm sorry to allow them to share what they need to uh, say right um so when it comes to good listening the principle is this you know you a good listener will listen not only what is said but what is also not said okay so that is a crucial thing okay this person is saying this but then 20% 30% they've actually you know they've left it unsaid so that also conveys something right okay so let's look at some principles okay 10 principles of effective listening i think it's in page 26 right principles so so first so first principle is of course to stop talking right to listen so many times we we interrupt okay because we we want to finish the sentence you know they maybe let, you know let's say they are they are a slow talker right they are saying you know when i went there and when i came back uh, uh, this morning and then you know you're, you're feeling so impatient no please finish the sentence i don't have <laughs> i don't have this time uh, and so you finish it for them you know this morning when i had uh, dosa for and you say okay breakfast i right? please get on to the next thing so so these are things that really um, uh you know they're not part of good listening skills uh and then you know we need to listen we need to be able to listen more uh, especially you know if your work involves listening let's say you're you're a pastor let's say you're a counselor um you know if your if your ministry involves a lot of that right then definitely this is something that we need to develop right okay so mark twain's quote quotation you know is very uh, quote is very interesting he says if we were supposed to talk more than we listen we would have two tongues and one ear <laughs> so you know this is the fact that you have two ears and one tongue means that you need to listen more right okay so <clears throat> to how do we prepare ourselves in order to listen you know focus on the speaker you know, put other things out of our mind you know whenever you know are we are distracted social media doesn't help us our attention span is reduced uh, drastically because of social media okay um if you if you just go look at the some of the the social media usage right people don't watch till the end of anything right it's just a few seconds and it's even if it's interesting they just say okay maybe i'll watch it later just a few seconds that is given i and i remember you know watching certain things with with my daughter i'm just sitting next to her and see and she's just moving it you know to the end moving the watching you know forwarding it to the end and saying it's okay it's okay it's fine 
So you see that, you know, as a generation, um, the social media is definitely not helping us. We are very distracted. And, and so it comes across in our human interaction also, right? Um, that we are distracted, that we don't listen. So we need to actually prepare, like even to listen, um, to put things out of our minds and say, okay, I'm having this meeting. I'm going to hear what the other person has to say, listen to what the other person has to say, right? I need to get clarity. So I might ask some questions to get clarity about what the person is saying if I don't understand, but I'm going to do this, right? Right. So put the speaker at ease, um, you know, when we interact with people and if we want to receive that, you know, whatever they are saying, and uh, maybe we need to, uh, you know, give a decision, maybe we need to give a counsel. Now, we need to put them at ease, meaning they need to feel comfortable to share, right? Why is it that some people, with some people we open up and with some others we don't? Right. If we if we ask ourselves, you know, we, because we feel comfortable with them, we feel that we are being heard, right? We feel that they understand, and though, therefore we feel like sharing a lot more with certain people than with others, right? And yes, you know, yes, it also matters that some people are acquaintances, some people you know are friends, some people are good friends, and so on. But also the fact that that person is listening, that person is respecting, that person is making you feel comfortable. Uh, you feel like opening up more, you feel like you know sharing more, right? So um, something that will help us is when we maintain eye contact, right? When somebody's talking and if you're constantly looking elsewhere, right, then the other person will feel that, okay, this person is uh, you know maybe not interested. Right. Or if you are, if somebody is telling you something very important, maybe about their life, about the difficult thing that they went through, and if you, <clears throat> you know, look behind, behind them, or you know, looking, uh, waving at others, and so then, what is the information they get? What is the message they get? That what I'm sharing, I'm sharing something very important, but this person doesn't seem to respect that. Right? This doesn't, doesn't seem to receive any of that. So. You know, it's better that I don't. So they might want to say 10 things, but they end up saying maybe three things, right? So, uh, in fact, we didn't realize it, but it is our attitude and our behavior which really um, did that, right? Uh, another thing to help us to be good listeners is to remove distractions, right? To focus on what is being said. So to remove distractions, what is it? You know, maybe phones. Maybe you know certain things that are distracting. You can move it out of the way, so that um, it can. Or maybe you know sometimes we go and then the TV is on, right? Or something is on on the computer, and then we keep glancing at it, <clears throat> and that proves to be a distraction. Or you glance at it, and then you, you know, sometimes it happens, right? You're talking to people, and then some message comes, and the person is, uh, you know, yeah, hey, go ahead, listen. I'm listening. Yeah, tell me. And then they are, you know, they are scrolling on their phone. And you don't, you don't feel like telling you. You want to wait till they finish that, right? So it happens. So any kind of distraction, if you can move it uh, out of the way, it will help uh, for us as listeners to listen more, and also help the other person to share, right? To speak clearly and share without any distractions, right? Um, fifth one: try to understand the other person's point of view. Okay, we might have to let go of prejudice preconceived ideas. So that means that you, you know, we we actually, you know, if you notice, let's say you're watching a match, right? You're watching a match and, uh, <clears throat> for example, let's say you're watching a badminton match or, you know, Olympics or something. Now, your country or your team is not there. It's not participating, right? But you're watching. But within that few seconds, you begin to <clears throat> support one team cheer for one team, you realize, you know, subconsciously you've made a decision already. And I noticed this when I was watching the Olympics, um, you know, recently and some of those badminton matches and volleyball and all that. Subconsciously, I've made a choice, decision to support a team. I don't know them. I don't know the players. I don't know this country. But somehow I made the decision, okay, uh, 
maybe based on the players names whatever it is or the way they played one point i just made a decision to support right and not support the other team while this this happens to us subconsciously so even when we are meeting people when we are talking to them it could be an interview it could be we are making those calculations and decisions in our minds without even without us knowing right? based on how they look based on what they are wearing based on what they are saying uh, how they speak right we it just goes on in seconds and suddenly we have formed a prejudice against the person right it could be a good impression it could be a bad impression but the thing is that that impression um, that is act acts like a filter to whatever they are saying right um, maybe they are saying something angry but that that emotion acts like a filter for us so we block off you know we, whatever they are saying you know it's it comes colored with a bias right meaning that bias that we have that prejudice that we have it it actually influences you know what you are listening what you are listening re receiving and right? so so it's it's important to be objective right to um, to to listen to hear the other person point of view but at the same time not allow these things to um, uh, to become a personal bias right? like a prejudice right it's it's difficult right it's difficult especially when you know the person right when you know the person when you know that you know certain things they've not done and maybe uh, you know you've told them so many times etc it becomes difficult right but we need to as a listener you know maybe even as a, i would say as a leader we need to have that skill to hear them listen them listen to them uh, without these filters right okay being patient yeah we we looked at that um listen to the tone volume and tone uh, because that says something about what they are saying okay what do we mean by tone when we say tone tone of their voice what do we mean um yeah we are talking loudly so like and uh, slowly mm, that so kind of Yeah. So loud and soft would be the volume, yeah. right? Uh, okay, loud, loudness and softness. Uh, you know, that's that's the dynamic of their voice. Lovely okay, topic. yeah. So when we say tone, tone could be maybe it's a harsh tone, right? Maybe it's an impatient tone. Maybe it's a uh, you know something that is softer, something, um, you know. So the tone uh, of it, something that's sweeter, something that's uh, you know harsh. So listen to that. You know, they maybe they're saying God loves you. but how are they saying it you know the is there sarcasm ah, god loves you you know that you know that's a tone and with the tone and the words when they put together you see that hey there's something wrong here they saying god loves you but then the way they saying it is different so that conveys right so so these are things <clears throat> like i know that uh, i was talking to someone who who had difficulty picking up these social cues right in the sense suppose a person is it's a it's a it's a condition right that person is going through uh, it's a medical condition where um suppose uh, you know a person smiles and says something or is angry and saying something the person would find it difficult to analyze it right or if the person is saying something as a joke and saying something funny but then the person is finding it difficult to uh, receive that uh, or receive that or assess that person thinks that oh, this person is being very serious you know um, so so all these kinds of th these kinds of things are all, are there you know medically also so all the more importance for us to uh, put some effort into this skill you know to see okay um, how can i be a better listener right okay watch and work uh, wait and watch for non verbal uh, communication we looked at that right okay there is this huria model of listening i'm just going to go through quickly which means h u r i e r the acronym um which um first is hearing okay uh, it it is it is talking about listening actually but then they use the word hearing 
second you stands for understanding okay so you you heard you listen do you understand third one is remembering remembering requires memory remembering requires focus uh, are you able to remember what they're saying in its entirety uh, then interpretation i stands for interpretation you know what does it mean okay i i heard something i remembered but what do they actually what does it mean right this person um, you know sometimes it's like this when somebody preaches um we hear it we remember it but then what does it actually mean what is the understanding of it right um do, uh, so that is the interpretation part then evaluation which means assess it um analyze it evaluate the information then finally comes the response right response to having received the message so so these are elements that we can think of when it comes to listening okay huria so hearing okay listening well without any distraction you understanding it remembering okay do we remember what they said interpreting it and then uh, inter interpreting as to um, to actually uh, get the meaning of it right and then e is evaluating assessing and then you respond right so these elements if it's there in our listening process then it will it will help us you know sometimes we see that certain things are missing okay the first thing itself hearing itself listening itself is not there right we are distracted so sometimes i find myself you know i'm just saying ah uh, uh, the person is saying something i'm just you know i'm listening and then my wife will ask me you know okay what did i say just now <laughs> okay then i know the oh, trouble so then i <laughs> i'm trying to remember what did she say i know the first thing she said but out of those three things i missed out the second and the third right so so hearing uh listening you know understanding it remembering remembering it as well so if these elements if we can actually consciously put it into our listening process in our conversations etc it will really help us right? you have a question francis yeah so while listening to a problem so mm. i have a friend so the problem of him is like if anybody said anything to him like this what i'm going through or this person did like this suddenly he will get the emotional mm like okay if anybody did against him he will get angry and he will only go on directly and way you did like this so is a condition or is a problem or how hmm. to work on that yeah so based on what the other person is saying maybe they are complaining about someone else this person immediately uh, responds or reacts okay? gets emotionally stirred up and reacts okay well if the condition is that serious if it requires that kind of a it is no problem in getting stirred up right uh, but the thing is how do you uh, is it a reaction or is it a response you know you you're getting angry you're getting upset because um because of injustice you know what the other person did was wrong but then how do you actually solve it so that's the thing um yeah and also uh, the thing is if we let's say you you and i are speaking and then you're saying something and i'm getting more and more upset um and because of which if i blurt out something in anger or if i'm shocked and i say something and then that's going to stop you from saying further on it's a similar situation where because of my response in anger and because of my reaction in anger it's got it's not going to help the other person so one needs to think about it you know how can i uh, yeah it it is upset it is shocking especially when it comes to parenting also you know um we need to give our children the freedom to come and tell us anything and everything right uh even with our spouse or children you know they need to be able to have the freedom to say okay i can tell daddy i can tell mommy this now when you give them the freedom they will come and tell you but some of the things they tell you will be shocking or maybe upset you know i did this i'm sorry at that moment at that moment you know that hey, why you know you're just like you're getting so upset and but still you need to be able to tell the person tell the child or tell the other person you know you know i i am upset about this i'm saddened by this but you know let's see how we can solve it and so that will be a uh, you know that will be a mature response that will be that will be helpful for the for that situation also 
yeah so um so getting emotional about it is not an issue but what you do with the emotion is the is the thing yeah that can make or break the situation it can add to the problem or it can solve it right okay okay what are some barriers okay some barriers meaning stumbling blocks things that actually stop us from being good listeners okay um one barrier is definitely you know especially if somebody is asking a question right and uh, you're thinking about the answer you know, or maybe they are saying something saying i have a problem we are immediately thinking about how can i fix this you know um so people say that generally men have that issue i, I don't know how uh, I, i don't know the signs behind it but they want to fix it so even in you know uh, in a marriage kind of situation where the wife just wants to be heard or just to understand the difficulty but they are always trying to fix the problem okay okay this is a solution these are the steps step 1 and 2 do it over okay over end of conversation right but the thing is um, we are always so what happens is in in such cases we are always thinking of what to say okay this person is saying like this how can what can i reply what can i give what scripture verse can i give right how can i solve this issue you know they're saying oh, they have a problem and so problem number 1 okay here's the verse problem number 2 here's the verse you know so uh, we are not really we are so we are thinking that right? we are not listening so we might lose out on something important that they are saying so it's important for us to receive it take it in and then respond right so that's the so they, they say that average speech rates are between 125 and 175 words per minute whereas we can process an average of 400 to 800 words a minute meaning we can when we speak it's about 125 to 175 words a minute uh, i don't know what kind of study they did but when we when we listen we can actually process more right so um so the thing is since we have the ability to process more we generally you know if the per, if the words that we are receiving are less we kind of shift we kind of drift right okay um some barrier could be the clarity with which the person is speaking you know some people are very clear in their communication so it's easy for the listener right um maybe the words they use maybe the language even language can be a big barrier because you know you're not familiar or the other person is not too comfortable with the language you know so then it becomes a barrier um the third one is also you know the personal appearance what we looked at you know the personal physical appearance or you know what what they're saying uh, sometimes it's like the person saying something which is you know in a in a very nice way and then we get totally caught up by it and miss out on certain facts you know is it factually correct is it uh, you know we we kind of cloud let that cloud our thinking right or who the person is we allow that to cloud our thinking and we find it difficult to assess it right okay so Uh, another problem is our body language in response to that person right our body language we can show people that we are imp- impatient right okay so how do we how how do we do that when we are not when we are distracting distracted sorry when we are fidgeting right when we look at the phone maybe when we are you know uh uh you know drumming off fingers on the table or something you know classical thing okay okay uh, just get it done right so we are fidgeting we are not focused so these when we convey we are telling the person you know i'm not listening so that can be a barrier as well to effective listening okay so these are some things that we can look at uh, in our uh, in developing our skill of listening right Okay so any uh, any questions any questions anything so on a scale of 1 to 10 or maybe 1 to 5 do you consider yourself to be a good listener what do you think what about you sri radha pre is it uh, okay but why do you say that sometimes i'm very 
Hmm. Okay, probably you can use the yeah. Yeah. So I struggle here, like when a person is talking, I I can't do eye contact. Mm. So I'll stare, and uh, when I, I I do the eye contact, I just uh, lose the focus. I can't concentrate, mm -hmm. or sometimes it feels like I'm just uh, disrespecting. It's mm. like I'm struggling there, so I can't actually like if I want to uh, look at the person's face, I'll just lose everything, mm. and uh, when I actually look at here and there, then I'll be like I feel like. Like I'm disrespecting. So when I'm thinking all these things, I can't actually focus you on that. that uh, I'm just missing first few all these lines. things. Mm -hmm. So eye contact means, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to be fully locked in and look at that person all the time. It's just that, you know, it's difficult for us to do that because when we think, like even right now, we look above, or you know, you you if you're a person who's visual, you're you know constantly looking above, you know, the ceiling or you're thinking. Uh, so it's it's natural. Not so high, <laughs> but generally, you know, you just look above the eyes. Right? Um, it's natural to for that. So we can always, um, you know, we do that and then we come back. You know, you're listening and em em you're empathizing with what they're saying, or you know, maybe you're nodding to what they're saying. Uh, so the thing is to be focused on the other person rather than on ourselves, right? Because um, our, ch the, our challenge could be that. What is the other person thinking of me? Right? What is the other person, you know, what if the other person thinks that I'm not paying attention? So these questions really stop us from, you know, listening. So, so that's those are something. So the thing is to be other focused rather than on, on ourselves. You know, it happens when in public speaking, also, you know, the same thing, right? We are focused on okay, how am I sounding? How am I looking? How am I you know, all these questions are there, but the minute we go past this challenge, we say, okay, it doesn't matter. I'm going to, you know, focus on what needs to be done and what needs to be, you know, listened to, etc. Then these things will actually kind of minimize and disappear. Right. Right. It also depends, you know, maybe on a certain day, it also depends on our on our, you know, what our mental state. Uh, maybe we didn't have our coffee. Maybe we are, you know, feeling hungry. Maybe we are whatever. You know, there's something, some problem that is there. So all these things actually affect our listening, right? So that also is there. Okay. Any? You have a question? Okay. And sometimes when you're speaking to others, um, they started repeating the same thing again and again in the same thing, but three four versions okay so like sometimes we have to tell them okay i but sometimes they'll get irritated or angry okay you're not listening or mm. so uh, so the, the scenario is where you uh, you are speaking something uh, they are saying something and then you repeat that uh, oh okay 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 so they're repeating the same thing over and over again yeah yeah, yeah. so they're going in cycles you know repeating the same thing um, yeah that happens uh, some senior people do that also, and it could be others also. Uh, maybe because they are worried about some, anxious about something, or maybe it's a habit. It could be anything, right? So, so what would help is to uh, for us to actually uh, rephrase it and say, "Okay, I understood that. Yeah, okay, you're saying that. Um, okay, this morning you had this. Yeah, I understood and got it. Yeah, um, anything else? You know, uh, so." If it's a question of uh, just uh, if they if they're expecting you to give a solution, you can state that so that it doesn't waste time and also you know we can move on to the next thing. Right? Um, yeah, so that will help just to uh, kind of rephrase that and tell them I understood it. Yes, that will help. Um, if they are very close to you, you can say you already told me. Yeah, <laughs> you already told me that thrice. If if they are you know uh, close to you, you can tell them, let's move on to other thing. But then if uh, yeah, your relationship does not permit that, you can always rephrase and it. And yeah. You are not patient. You don't you don't have the patience to hear this two, three, four. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, they read it, misread it that way. But but we can actually tell them, I understood this, and that will help. Right. 
Okay, Jackin has a question. Okay, another challenge, waiting to respond uh, and thinking of what to reply rather than listening keenly or understanding the other person's view. Yeah, yeah. We, we are under pressure. See, the thing is, uh, maybe they have come to you because you are knowledgeable about something. Maybe the person is approaching you because um, maybe, you know, you're a spiritually mature person and they see you like that and and they've come to you for some answers, right? So that is when the pressure is there for us to give a solution. And when you know that, okay, it's a well-defined thing. Okay, I'm coming to get some answers and here's my question, here are my problems. Then there is added pressure to deliver, right? You need to give that solution. But we need to be honest, you know. Um, if we know, and based on whatever we know, you know, like in terms of knowledge, in terms of experience, the leading of the Spirit of God, we share. Otherwise, we don't have to put ourselves under unnecessary pressure. So, when we tell ourselves that, hey, if I if I know I'm going to tell, if I don't know, I'm not, I'm going to be very honest, but I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen and hear and understand it so that I can give a very accurate response right so um, when we remove that pressure of ourselves then we find ourselves free to listen but when we put ourselves under pressure oh, i'm the expert i'm supposed to give a solution um, then all the time you're thinking of solutions rather than receiving the uh, what the other person is communicating right so that's the thing um any other challenges that you face? Challenge could be certain people we, we don't want to listen, right? Because we've had bad experience. We, <laughs> we know that they talk too much or, you know, <laughs> they talk about the same thing. They talk too much, right? So we, we want to cut them off. And then when they come in one direction only, we are moving in the other direction. But yeah, this, but the thing is, you know, sometimes we, uh, yeah, it, but it helps to, uh, in such scenarios, some situations, you know, like maybe the, you know, the, the whole conversation goes for an hour, you can't spend that much. It helps to um, really summarize and help the person, you know, saying, okay, I've got that. Can we, you know, can, what is, what is the next thing? You've got that. And also, uh, so that, the other person also understands, you know, certain boundaries, etc., and uh, and also at the same time, our listening is also not hindered by the previous bias of who that person is, right? Okay. Okay. Let's look at um, if there are no further, you know, thoughts or questions. Um, let's look at um, the other skill that we need to uh, develop. And this is something that uh, I know, like uh, most of us struggle with. It's uh, it's about managing time, right? Because all of us uh, have only so much in a day, so many hours in a day, and uh, it is something that we uh, cha some challenges us. Um, it's good in theory, right? When we say, okay, you know, this is what I know. This is how I need to have this list. I need to prioritize. But when we come to put into putting it into practice. Uh, we find that implementing this right is is challenging right so so let's see um so uh, one basic thing when it comes to managing time is prioritizing okay what is prioritizing when you say priori priority or prioritizing what is it yeah which is uh, which is important uh, you have a list of, when you say list of prior 10 things, what is that thing that you're going to address first? What is that thing that you're going to do first uh, and why? Okay, so if you actually have 10 things to do, there is a reason, you know, out of that 10, why do you, why do you pick one and do it? There's a reason, right? Uh, maybe, you know, some things need to be posted, some emails need to be sent, some calls need to be made. There's a reason why you pick one particular thing as the first thing to do. And that logic or the reasoning why you pick that needs to be a correct logic. right? 
sometimes it could be i'm not doing this three things because it's difficult i'm not doing this you know point number 4 on the list because it's unpleasant right this could be some reasons that we are giving ourselves i, I don't want to do this i don't want to do that uh, but i'm going to do this why because i like to do it right it's something that i like to do and so i'm going to do it so but when it comes to managing time we can't give or we can't go by these kind of reasonings you know if we only only do certain things or only only do certain calls or only do certain tasks because we like it or it's convenient and we leave out the other things because it's not convenient or difficult or challenging then we will not be you know making good use of our time okay so we know time is a resource time is a precious resource time is a resource that uh, that is always seems to be in short supply right given the nature of tasks and work and everything that we need to do so we need to pay all the more attention to how we spend our time right if you ask a businessman businessman would say you know time is money a business person would say time is money because um with that you either put it to good use and get some return or you you know let it go and don't get anything out of it right so time is important right okay so um what will help us prioritize is to know the difference between what is urgent but and what is important what is urgent what is important right so yeah so what do you think is urgent what do you think is the difference between urgent and important urgent is something needs to be done now immediate yeah important important is it, that also it, it's important but we can uh, I mean can do it later also, or after some time hmm any other thoughts urgent important and this is my yeah, go ahead hmm. yeah so when it's coming to set up sorry sorry set up this system yeah that is important sorry urgent thing like running out of time lot of things are there but at the same time we got a message like pastor nancy want to talk to that is important thing mm like that that's all i thought so okay so let two two things that you need to do one is set it up that's an urgent thing because without setting up the class will not happen but at the same time you get a message you know someone wants to talk to you so that's also important because it's uh, it's an important message obviously so how do you prioritize that right so see the urgent thing may not always be important may not right it is urgent which means that it needs to be done now otherwise we'll miss out on it but that urgent thing need not be a major task may not be a very important task okay so some of the urgent things uh like for example if it could be it need not be a very complex task right so is it required for you to do it or can anyone else do it so that's the thing right same thing when it comes to important you know is it you who needs to do it and can this be done a little later it is important like something like a exam or a project a presentation but it's not it is very important because you need to do it you need to put in the effort but it's not urgent it's not you know right now you need to submit it is very important when you look at it you know you could fail the subject if you don't you know uh, submit that but you can take the time you ha- you have the uh, or the uh, you know the privilege of taking two months to complete it okay so now if you think that okay this is important 
this submission is important. I need to work at it. And let's say you spend about one hour or you know two hours on it, right? It's good. But if we leave out the urgent ones, like which require immediate things, then it becomes a problem. So helping us to understand, okay, what is urgent and what is important is very foundational in our management of time. Right? It will really help us uh, to know that. So uh, it will become a practice. You know, uh, because each one's you know thing is different. Whatever tasks we do, uh, responsibilities we have, but uh, when we when we get the hang of this, you know, urgent and important, it'll help us. So, because some things would be a mix of both, urgent and important, and those things have to be done right then, right now, and you cannot ignore it. Right? Okay. So we'll stop here, and then we'll continue next class. Thanks.